Okay, this is AI trust engineering. Uh, we're looking at different application areas which are being transformed by AI. Here we're looking at the health and medical areas, life sciences. And we have a, a lesson here on diagnostics where there's quite a lot of clear application of AI. And this is a rather sad diagram in that it doesn't actually say that one of the business cases for AI is that it actually will make people healthier. It's sort of vaguely down here, enhanced patient experience. But there's going to be, there's clearly a lot of AI which are going to do better uh, image recognition and better uh, customization of the patient experience. And they will just make people healthier, and that's important. These other things like humans to AI and saving money are sort of good. Radiologist workload is important sort of because the AI will actually allow the, a more efficient, quicker diagnosis. Productivity, which is a standard one where you actually quickly recognize which patients are the ones that really need medical help. And um, saving money, um, not getting sued as much. Um, don't make so many errors, so you keep your patients, and um, you just do a better job so patients are happier. So, well, that's sort of, again, the real problem thing, but it's stated in a rather cynical fashion. So, improved outcomes, agreed. All right, so that's the overall business case. It's very strong, and we better see if we can do anything. So, here is uh, one we mentioned actually a little later, um, where, um, Pneumonia, which must be looking at uh, lung images, and you um, diagnose that with 33% fewer errors than individuals. And uh, this particular AI platform is, does, it has better deep learning than the previous ones, which is not surprising because deep learning is always improving for images because there's a new image network every every few months. Uh, of course, the AI is going to be faster than the humans. If it works, it will be fast. And 100 is not a surprising number. It could be much bigger than that. Um, so the healthcare savings will be a, quite a lot of money because you're going to do things which previously either didn't get done or made people ill, so they won't stay in hospital longer. And that's what this says: reduce treatment costs, improve outcomes. No many, it's not so many suits. And um, it says here, Massachusetts hospitals had uh, 600 million um, malpractice uh, costs uh, in one year. And uh, generally, you will decrease uh, labor costs and increase workforce productivity by automating a lot of the support tasks, because that is not possibly the most interesting AI. Uh, I think the most interesting AI is the one that really homes in and does a better job. Um, so these, there are people uh, doing this already. There was uh, again, almost certainly, a uh, image-based thing looking at internal bleeding um, by diagnosing the most serious versions of that very quickly. This is a big health uh, health industry company. Another one here um, put an AI early warning sy system for sepsis into its EHR system, so they could really tell the uh, staff who to focus on quickly. Um, precision medicine is in general a very uh, interesting one because this AI can customize the treatment when it's done right. And uh, because the AI can match the particular patient to the many varieties of treatments that have been developed. And uh, it's relatively clear that as images are so well developed, and we, we know that from self-driving cars and things like that, and surveillance and face recognition. The image recognition has drastically improved with deep learning. <coughs> and this whole area of medical imaging will be a huge win. Well, here's this again, the same statement about uh, unanimous AI about and pneumonia. Here is a chest x-ray system that um, was 100 times faster than radiologists. And um, it had an even better ML algorithm to cut the diagnosis time in half. 
Um, so we well, the sort of simplest application is just to get rid of the obvious cases. They can run through, because it's actually easier probably to say, instead of saying, well, this person has the following problem, say this person doesn't see, has no obvious problem on this image. So they can reduce, say, for mammograms, that uh, the number they have to look at, look at by a significant factor. Um, so that's again saying, your <coughs> radiologists are made better use of. And um, <coughs> you can replace the health system star, but uh, I don't think that's such a strong case. It's probably, these are the staff doing it manually, presumably. So maybe you can reduce some of that. But I think it's more likely just to do a better job. Okay, uh, radiology has the fast, largest number of um, approved applications, because it's really quite clear why it's a good idea there. Um, actually, in the survey, I was a bit surprised that AI for imaging was not a bit higher. It's a precision medicine, which is still right at the beginning. Consumer technology genomics, which is almost old in the tooth, are rated above that. But anyway, it's still rated pretty highly, 52%. Whereas poor old cloud computing is right at the bottom. Ophthalmology, ophthalmology has a lot of obvious AI applications. If you have your go to your eye doctor, they stare into your eye continuously. And so that's obviously something that um, uh, image processing can have a big impact on. Uh, Google's healthcare company Verily uh, built an AI algorithm here. And, the, and there's an example here from Iowa uh, for looking at diabetic um, problems. So this is pointing out that AI can just do a lot of processing of information. That's, a, that's actually a pretty advanced um, use of AI today by you know, information retrieval uh, of various types. and. Um, IBM's Watson had a focus on that type of processing existing data sitting in texts. Um, you can also, of course, as we've already identified some cases where AI can process either old, old data or existing real-time data to try to prioritize uh, who should be treated first. And also it can even, you know, See how people are doing in the hospital itself. And uh, we've already mentioned this is rather unfortunate idea that this will save money because you won't get sued as much. Um, and um, also, we can stop them from being um, being readmitted because we uh, release them too early and things like that. There's this concept of digital therapeutics, which is not actually very well defined as far as I can see. But it basically means you use some software. <coughs> and this software is, is coupled with some drugs and things, and you um, have an enhanced um, uh, medical care. And um, it is. I guess not regulated. That's sort of interesting. It adds value, uh, improves the clinical benefits, um, and you do need to get approval if you claim uh, claim something significant. Um, so there are some example companies um, which I've not actually heard of. These are another list of them here. And it appears that this is a reasonably promising development, and I would expect it to be. It's not directly AI, but it will certainly include AI as part of its uh, activity. There are some more uh, companies where the, remember we had this concept of big companies advanced by acquiring small companies. We saw that dramatically with banks. So the same is obviously true in the pharmaceutical area. 
locally, Eli Lilly is a giant company, and it can basically acquire appropriate um, uh, digital uh, therapeutic companies. So here is sort of a summary of where we are. We have uh, four obvious winning ideas. Anything to do with images, because image analysis is great. Anything to do with voice from chatbots through um, um, through uh, recording what doctors say in a, in a session, uh, information retrieval, and of course there's some which are just a lot, which is general IT, nifty use of cloud computing. So here are the ways where we're really making significant important progress. There are other ones, there will be many more. So that's the end of this particular uh, le lesson on diagnostics and AI. Thank you very much.